It's a good thing to remember that extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. Hi, this is Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting in Russell, Ontario, Canada, and you're listening to Quick Hits. This is being recorded on the afternoon of January the 1st, 2021. So to all my subscribers and those who listen to me on YouTube and other platforms, Happy New Year. I think we all are hoping that 2021 is, uh, shall we say, a tad better than 2020, but with the coronavirus and all. Over the last couple episodes, I've been speculating or sharing my views on the Nashville bombing of Christmas Day. So a week ago today, there was an RV exploded in the downtown core of Nashville, Tennessee, very early in the morning. The RV went kaboom, and uh, three people were injured slightly in the blast. There was some property damage as well to the streets of Nashville. And it turns out that there there was a body found inside the RV, or rather, I guess, parts of a body after it exploded. And it turns out that this was the body of a 63-year-old Tennessean called Anthony Quinn Warner. We're still looking for more information on what happened and why it happened. And that information is starting to trickle out here. I've been uh, weighing in on this a bit for the past couple of days saying that as far as I can tell, based on what I have learned so far, that this is not an act of terrorism, as there's no obvious or definitive motive that would fit a political, ideological, or religious reason as to why the explosion took place. And I caution people to keep your powder dry. Maybe that's a bad analogy to use when talking about an explosion, because more information needed to be gathered by competent law enforcement officials, not twi- not the Twitterverse or the or people who are blogging like me, but real information uh, that was gathered by real investigators who know their jobs before we could actually come up with any kind of even speculative opinion on whether or not there was a real political motive behind this act, which would in fact label it an act of terrorism. This, of course, has not stopped people on social media from weighing in on this argument. I've seen lots of posts on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And I, I, I want to share some of those with you today because we are learning more, as I said. But I'm still not going to say that what happened on Christmas Day in Nashville was an act of terrorism. So what have we learned? Well, we did learn that Mr. Warner's girlfriend had warned authorities back in 2019 that Uh, Mr. Warner was interested in making explosives. Maybe he had actually created some bombs. So fully a year and a half or a year and a bit before the actual explosion took place. It turns out that the authorities tried to contact Mr. Warner. Uh, They couldn't do so. And in the words of a senior investigator, uh, they needed reasonable grounds to go in and search his place. They didn't have those reasonable grounds, at least not not, 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 not enough information at the time. And therefore, the case kind of lapsed. The other interesting thing that's coming out over the past couple of days is allegations that Mr. Warner believed in certain conspiracy theories. And the one <laughs> that I have to chuckle at was that apparently, I'm not sure where this information is coming from, if it's been corroborated, he believed in the so-called lizard people theory. Now, this is a belief that there are leading politicians and world leaders around the world who are actually alien lizards. Okay, extraterrestrial lizards who have taken human form and are now running the planet. Uh, If memory serves me correct, wasn't there a a really not great uh, U.S. television series called V about 30 or 40 years ago? I seem to recall watching it where the lizard people came and took over. So that may be, in fact, where the conspiracy theory comes from. There's also some some speculation that Mr. Warner may, in fact, have also share the so-called 5G conspiracies. Now, these are these notions that 5G telecommunications is uh, taking over our minds and it's going to control us and, you know, yada, yada, yada. You've all, I'm sure you've all seen conspiracy theories along these lines. If this is true, does this mean that what Mr. Warner went and di- did was actually an act of terrorism? I've also heard Another conspiracy theory that I want to share with you, this is from actually a a subscriber of mine on YouTube. Um, And I also saw the same thing on LinkedIn. But one of my YouTube followers called Centurio Zen has talked about the the fact that 
there that there somehow there was a link between what happened uh, on Christmas Day and here wait for it the fact that it was the AT&T building that was attacked and that AT&T is somehow linked to Dominion voting. Now if you recall this is this notion that Dominion voting did some of the counting for the ballots in the recent US presidential election and that somehow this whole thing was rigged and that the AT&T building was going to audit this and so and so they blew up the AT&T building to prevent the audit from happening or or, or, or somehow along those lines. Um, so another one of my contacts uh, on YouTube or one of my followers rather called Ollie also shared this. I don't know about you. This strikes me as a little bit too far out there in terms of a justification for why the bomb was, was carried out in front of the AT&T building in Nashville, Tennessee. As I pointed out in my social media postings, there's also a Hooters on that street. So who knows if Mr. Warner was, you know, trying to bomb a restaurant that, that manipulates women and makes them dress in skimpy uniforms. I think the whole point of this thing is that when you're talking about conspiracy theories, you have to first acknowledge that a lot of Americans, according to a recent Ipsos poll, believe in some of these theories. One of the polls asked the question about this idea that there's a satanic cult amongst politicians that run child sex rings in the United States. And 17% of those polled in the United States believed that that was true. Now, you may recall that this notion of the satanic child sex rings was what led a man in from Virginia or North Carolina or something, I forget where, to drive to Washington, D.C. a couple of years ago and to plan to attack a pizzeria called Comet Ping Pong or something along those lines because he was convinced, based on these conspiracy theories, that Hillary Clinton was running a satanic sex ring, exploiting children in the basement of the restaurant. So yeah, conspiracy theories really are important elements, and some of them do gain a certain level of credibility amongst a certain part of the population. If this is true, if Mr. Warner believed in some of these conspiracy theories, be it the rather out there lizard people theory, or this 5G conspiracy, or who knows, maybe the fact that AT&T was involved in audit of Dominion voting, would this constitute an act of terrorism? In other words, would this then make what he did on Christmas morning a, a serious act of violence? Yes. Which, which damaged infrastructure? Yes. And was carried out for some kind of political, ideological, or religious motivation? I don't know. I have a hard time thinking that a conspiracy theory is the equivalent of, a, of an ideology. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not an expert on conspiracy theories. I do know that the so-called QAnon, this mysterious figure who has all the answers to life, the universe and everything, in a uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy kind of way, could be seen as an ideology to some. Some have argued that in that way. I've seen some articles to that effect. Maybe this would therefore translate the act of the, the bombing on, on Christmas morning as an act of terrorism? I don't know. I'd really be curious what you guys think about this. I'm just hoping for more information to come out. Lastly, speaking of conspiracy theories, I do want to address something that I did see on social media in the aftermath of the attack, especially when it came out that the girlfriend had warned the FBI about the bomb making. There are people on, on Twitter who said, and I quote, or rather paraphrase, had this been a Muslim guy who had explosives, there's no way in hell he wouldn't have been investigated. The fact he was a white guy just goes to show that the FBI and their counterparts are systemically racist. And I fought back and I wrote back immediately calling that bullshit. The FBI, I'm pretty sure, takes these cases seriously. As I just noted at the outset of this podcast, had there been reasonable grounds to believe that there was any seriousness to this explosive manufacturer, they would have looked into it. They try to look, look, look into it for a whole host of reasons, including constitutional ones, they couldn't do it. I'd be very, very skeptical to say that just because he happened to be a white guy, not a Muslim, he wasn't being investigated. That kind of language doesn't help. That is conspir that's consp conspiratorial in my mind. I'm not saying there isn't, there isn't racism. 
and I'm not saying there isn't bias, but to accuse a national police force of ignoring information which it would have deemed credible to launch an investigation because the guy is white, that's unacceptable. And I, I would call on people to kind of dial back a little bit on making those accusations. Before I go, it's time for another Hardy Boys tip. As you, if you recall from my last podcast, at the end of every quick hits, I'm going to give you leave you some, with some wisdom uh, from the Hardy Boys. This was a series that I read as a child of the two boy detectives, uh, Frank and Joe Hardy. They were the sons of the internationally famous Fenton Hardy. He was a detective. And as part of the things they investigated was terrorism. So here is this week's quote, Guide to Life from the Hardy Boys. And it comes from the book entitled The Viking Symbol Mystery. And this, this, this piece of wisdom from the Hardy Boys is as follows. Never argue with a herd of buffaloes. That sounds pretty, pretty, pretty wise to me. I don't remember last time I could, I could think of seeing a herd of buffaloes involved in a terrorism case. But if they, if you're doing counterterrorism work and you come across a herd of buffaloes, you better not argue with them. Again, words of wisdom from the Hardy Boys. Anyhow, that's what I think. What do you think about this conspiracy theory angle to the Nashville bombings? If in fact this was what drove Mr. Warner to do this, does that make him a terrorist? I'd love to hear your opinions on this. You can reach me on. Email borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at borealisaves. You'll also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like this content and you want to get more, please subscribe. Go to www.borealisthreatenrisk.com. Hit the subscribe button, provide your email address. Not only will you get all the content automatically to your inbox every day, today in terrorism, podcasts, and blogs, you'll get material that only subscribers are getting. Some crickets podcasts are available only for subscribers. Why don't you become part of the hundreds that have joined already? I'd love to be have you part of the club. Anyhow, I'll talk to you soon. Until then, stay safe.